It is coming in hot. And by that, I mean the imposter syndrome. Why do I have imposter syndrome? I don't know, because I'm talking about my own experience. There's literally no need for me to have imposter syndrome right now, but I've been feeling this way since last week, this week, today, and I really don't know what to do other than address it and acknowledge it and maybe I will finally be able to get through this video. Part of me is really excited because I'm finally getting to talk about friendships. I'm bringing that onto the page, but also it's not exactly a happy topic. So there's that. I'm thinking maybe the imposter syndrome is coming in because I'm talking about friendships and that's not a topic I've really touched on. So maybe that's what it is. I'm really hoping this makes sense and it's maybe even relatable, like, I can't possibly be the only one that felt like this growing up. The whole point of making friends when we were younger, growing up, going to school, was so that we had a feeling of belonging. And I had a group of friends that I grew up with, but I still felt left out. Now, it took me some time to actually figure out what this feeling was and how to put it into words so that I could actually understand it. It's something that's always unfortunately been there. Now, I think in grade school, I was still probably too young to really understand this feeling. And I don't think it really surfaced until fifth grade going into middle school. And of course, in middle school, that's when we're all hitting puberty and we're all starting to go through those hormonal changes and stuff. So it's like at the time, it was just kind of like, ah, uh, it's just whatever. And finally come high school, I think that's when I actually acknowledged that I had some sort of feeling where I didn't belong. I didn't feel wanted and I didn't feel, I felt left out even though I had a bunch of friends. So at least where I'm from, high school is probably where everyone starts branching off into different electives based on interest. So that's kind of where I initially sort of felt like I was starting to get left out. And that's probably just because they all were doing the same elective and I was doing something different. Basically, everyone in my friend group chose band and I chose chorus. Maybe that played a part in it and it was just like a natural thing because we were doing different electives. But once we reached high school, as we get older, we're getting more independent, people are getting their driver's license, little things started happening. Like I would find out there would be get togethers and I wasn't invited and I wouldn't find out until after the fact. And it wasn't necessarily something that like every single person was included in. Sometimes it would just be like little sub clicks within our whole friend group, which is fine, but it was just happening frequently. And at the time I just kind of brushed it off because I was just like, it's whatever. And I started making friends and other activities I was a part of in high school, like the different clubs, student council, chorus. At the time, they felt like my friends, but looking back, I don't know if I can say we ever went past like acquaintanceship, acquaintanceship, being acquaintances. Now, maybe part of that is my fault for not keeping in touch. Maybe it's a mutual thing. Maybe it's just all in my head. I don't know. Like I said, it's just my experience. It's just how I'm feeling. And... I always considered myself a floater. I have no idea if this is an actual term. It's just how I, I felt like it described how I felt accurately, where I would have these acquaintances, friends in all these different areas, but I was never really close to anyone. I take that back. I did have a couple of close friends that I still keep in touch with from high school. They are the exception. This is not about them, but everyone else. I felt like I was a floater. It was just kind of like, if I was there, it didn't bother them. If I wasn't there, it didn't bother them. Fast forward to senior year, the end of senior year. I was really starting to feel not included, left out. Like, I felt like I was still friends with all these people, but like part of me just felt like I wasn't wanted. So I went into college with this mission of, I want to find my person. I want to find my best friend. And for the first three years of college, I would always feel like I found my person. And then I was disappointed because to me, I felt like we were so close. We were so tight. We were telling each other everything. We were doing everything together. What I thought best friends were like, we were doing all of it. And every year I would be crushed 
because something would happen, something would be said, and I would realize that my feelings weren't reciprocated. Where I thought we were best friends, I found out the feeling was not mutual. And even though it was disappointing, it wasn't something I like held against that person per se, because I also started realizing not everyone is for you. You're not for everybody. And it's important to find your people. I just didn't realize it was going to be so hard. I will say I did finally find my person, my best friend, come my fourth year. I did five years of college because I did a double major. But I finally found my person and I was able to do two years with her in college. And we we still keep in touch, obviously, because we're doing annual trips together and whatnot. And I'm a bridesmaid for her. So it's like, obviously, we're still really close. But finding that friendship really put all the others into perspective. I honestly used to think I was crazy for thinking this way, for feeling like I didn't belong. Because I was like, I told myself, like, you grew up with these people. They invited you to birthday parties. You invited them to your birthday parties. You did everything with them. Like, it's got to be in your head. You're projecting something. You're just insecure. Like, I really thought it was just me. Until my freshman year... A girl I met in high school, she went to the college down the street from me. So we hung out a lot. One day she was visiting me in my dorm room. I think it was like shortly after our freshman year started. And she asked me if I had seen a specific picture. It was a beach picture. It was a picture of all of our friends from high school at the beach together celebrating the end of senior year slash yay we're all going to college let's have one more big hangout before we all go separate ways and she had asked me if I had seen that picture and I had and at that time when I saw this picture I felt all those feelings bubbled up again I was just like why wasn't I invited to this like I didn't know they were even planning this you know like you couldn't even offer me an invite it really felt like it had been hidden from me intentionally. It felt like it just brought up all those feelings. And again, I was just like, am I really in my own head or are they purposely leaving me out? I had brushed it off. The way I rationalized it to myself was, would, would you have actually gone? Would I have even been allowed to go? Like, would my parents have even allowed to go? The answer is probably not because I I was very sheltered. They were very strict at the time. So it's like, probably not. So it's like, you know, why even get upset if I wouldn't have been able to go anyways? But I felt what I felt. So I told my friend, yeah, I saw that picture. What about it? She's got this look in her face. Like she's, like I could tell she was upset. But she asks me, did you know about it? Were you invited? And I said, I didn't know about it. And no, I was not invited. And what she said broke me because something I cannot handle are my friends being wronged. Like if you want to be mean to me, whatever, I'll deal with it. But if I feel like my friends are being wronged in some way, like I'm ready to freaking fight, okay? And she just goes, I wasn't either. I really thought we were their friends. This is bringing up some emotions. But when she told me that... But when she said, I thought we were their friends, that was kind of my validation that I was not crazy, that these feelings of like being left out, excluded, like I wasn't imagining it. It was happening. I do want to add that I by no means think any of my old friends are bad people. I don't necessarily think there was like a super malicious intent behind any of it. I think... We were high schoolers, still learning how to communicate, still learning relationships and boundaries. Do I think there were probably things that I could have done better as a friend? Probably. I mean, we all can do better. Could it have just been they felt like we weren't as close or maybe I wasn't interested? Maybe. I have come to realize something about myself and that is... Even if you think I'm going to say no to an invite, I still want the invitation because I want to feel wanted. I want to feel like you want me there and you want me to know that there is an invitation if by the off chance I decide to accept it. It's kind of like with my best friend's bachelorette party where she told me she wanted me to have the invitation to have the option to come if I wanted, even though she kind of figured I was going to say no because she knows me. 
I don't know if this is going to sound mean or not, but I will say that a pro to all of this is realizing that they aren't my people, which is fine. I feel like if for some reason I ever did need to reach out to them, like it would kind of be like a polite acquaintance thing and like we would be able to converse fine. But I do recognize that like they're just not my people and I'm not their person totally okay. But going off of that, I am kind of relieved in having learned that lesson because now I'm not over here entertaining, spending time and energy on relationships that aren't going to serve me and vice versa. Because a relationship is a two-way street. Friendship, relationships, they're all two-way streets. You need to be able to serve them just as much as they serve you. There's a phrase my dad would say, and I have no idea if it's an actual saying or not. He would tell my siblings and I that our friends in high school are friends for life. And that was always kind of funny to me because, well, I just explained it all. I felt like I was excluded, like I wasn't actually part of the group. And these are the people I grew up with, like all the way through high school. So I always found that kind of funny. I always felt like my true friends, they all emerged in college. Not that there aren't people who haven't made friends in high school that have lasted their entire lives. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm just saying like, because I know there's plenty of people at my high school that still keep in touch, that are still very close. But that was just a very odd saying to me. I would say all of my important relationships have come from either college or from places of work after high school. And like I mentioned before, I do have those high school friends that are still in my life. Actually, it might only be one, but I know she's a real one. Even though we don't talk frequently, she has shown that she has always loved me for me and has always been there for me after all these years. And I didn't even meet her until high school. Compared to my old friend group, like I knew her the least amount of time. And I think that just goes to show that it doesn't matter how long you know a person. The right people will come into your life and it'll feel like you've known each other forever, even if it's only been a year. 